It's a very sad day today. We all believe in in God and in His commandments. <laughs> this is after the book, and the book is only what should I tell you? Every day during that period, I could have written a whole book. Every single day, just what happening in the morning, I got out, they came at night home, I could have written, I could have filled up a book like that. How did you survive in the world? Like with food? Like how did you? I ate did... kosher all the time. Well, where did you get the food from? <laughs> what? Where did you get the food from? <laughs> how you call it? Packages from Milmart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which? <laughs> I was, I was, I was in the patrol. You know what the patrol is? They were headquarters. They were mountains. And our job was to make a circle around it to the villages to make sure that uh, if there's an attack. We should go on headquarters. So we went there every night, and every night they gave you a certain uh, code. Colored bullets, two green, one black, one brown, one yellow. Green, blue, yellow, you know. And they said in case an attack, there are two yellow and one green. And they changed it. Every day was changed. The code was changed just in case they catch somebody and someone gave out the code, you know, they shouldn't, uh, they should be, they shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be able to do that. So if you, you went out, it was 20, 20 miles a day to go around headquarters, two villages, and I had in one village, I had a old peasant woman, she was working, she was, when she was a young, young woman, she was working as a maid in a Jewish household. So I bought a big pen like this here, maybe it's a five gallon. And she cooked for me potato soup with uh, it's metal. How is it called? Smetan? Oh, what is it called? Smetan in, 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 in sour cream. It's sour cream. Then I, and she cooked it. Not bad. It's a kosher pot. And it was they know the refrigerators over there, so you put them in the chimney, the chimney school put it in the, and uh, came everywhere, every day I passed by there, I took uh, some bread I had over there, eggs I had, butter I had, and I had that, uh, that soup, this was, yeah, next time. week, oh. next week he, oh, he made potato, potato soup with, uh, with uh, sour cream, yeah. and uh, well, a had, Jewish uh, household? No, she worked in the oh, Jewish house, yeah, mm -hmm. was, was like a young girl, well, she knew about that. You weren't afraid of her uh, telling the Nazis, right? <laughs> Our job was to make sure that the, the Nazis didn't come into town. So how do you do? You go into the town and all of a sudden say, Mr. Mr. Nazi, how are you? You don't, you don't do that. Before you go into no, I know, but I'm saying, but, but you, you know her, you're saying. She recognized, she didn't recognize you? Of course she knows me. I mean, everybody in town, they, everybody knew me. Before you get to town, you want to make sure the Nazis didn't come at night uh, into town. So what do you do? You don't walk into town. So before they stay, stop before the town and wait behind, there no highways there, but there were mountain roads. And first peasant comes out, they stop him, and they scare the, they scare the daylight of him. He had long, long knives. And he held a knife on his neck. He says, You are one of the collaborators with the Nazis. He says, No. Yes, you are, and so on. And he died, uh, he scared the daylight out of him. And then he says, How many children do you have? This. He says, After you made sure you know that he got fear of God, you know, then you ask him, How many Nazis came? How many, how many Germans came in town this time? He says, None. You lie, you know. Seem to so they interrogate until you convince, you know, that uh, you just didn't walk into a town here. I am. It was every time. Did you ever bump into someone that uh, that you had to uh, kill? What? Did you ever bump into a Nazi by mistake and you had to finish him off? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, when you caught some Nazis, okay, 
he tried not to kill him because he needed information. So he brought him, bring him up, you know, they interrogate him. And the fish and the interrogation, and they're useless anymore, they can't get any more information out of them. The person who caught them, he had the privilege of killing him. But we, our policy was, a bullet is served for warriors, for soldiers. Those beasts, they don't deserve a bullet. This is only for soldiers, you know. The Nazis, you know, that's considered beasts. That said that it's too an uh, honorable thing to shoot, you know. So what we used to do is we uh, used to tie him to a tree and uh, had knives. So you want him to do you don't want to die right away, you know. You just get his stomach and you turn out the knife, turn around the knife to make sure it's, once intestines are cut, it's very, it's a very slow death because till they have to bleed to death, you know. But in the meantime, till they bleed to death, it could take 10, 15 minutes. It's not a pleasant way to die, and they are conscious, you know. The Nazi probably liked Jews by the time uh, you were done with them, huh? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so when I came, when I came to with those Nazis, we had, a, I had a partner, my, my, uh, so I'm supposed to to do it. So I took the knife off uh, from my boot and I gave it to my, my friend. He said, you do it. I think I couldn't do it. It was not in my, uh, they didn't teach me the Shiva to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very grateful, you know, I gave him that special honor. <laughs> I gave him $10,000, he wouldn't be a second. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, I w you know, the, the most disgusting thing was, you know, when they tied down, but they knew what's, uh, what they are going to get. They begged for the life, I'm not a Nazi, I'm innocent, I never did anything, and I have wives, have mercy over my children, my days, and they were, so I looked and said, that miserable guy, you know, he killed women and children, you know, in town, in hundreds of them, you know, and all of a sudden that creep is asking for mercy, you know, this was most. What would you do with the guy's jacket and boots? Give it to the other partisans so they would dress, you know, dress. What? What would you do with the jackets and the boots and the gun? You would yeah, use it, right? It to your clothing. Yeah, we used it, sure. They, they, they That's how you uh, blended in. What do you mean? That's how you uh, you made yourself look like, uh, like no? You couldn't make yourself, you know. Yeah. You were fighting, you know, but you know, but did. You are. Uh, as you know what I'm saying, right? I mean, as long as you live, you are not as a partisan. In law number first is you never give up your arms. Did so you change the world? Did you did you succeed? Don't you just, don't you see? Don't you see? Oh, I'm all for I'm all for it. You can't see the difference. I think you pick the rest of the time. That's my opinion. That's it. That's what we need encouragement. That's, That's why. Right. Think you're wasting your time. Some encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> so. So the book is The Youngest Partisan yeah. Yeah. by Art Scroll. Yeah. My name is Rami Cohen. All the papers, papers, I had uh, false papers. I'm going to go. I'm a Roman Catholic. My name is Jan Kovac. So I told my name is Cohen. She says, no, your name is Jan Kovac. So I told him, Captain, those papers are false. They're not, they're false papers. I'm Jewish. My name is Rami Cohen. He says, looks again. He says, your name is Jan Kovac. He says, no. He gave a bank at the table, you know. The table, the desk was a tree trunk cut, you know. <laughs> I'm sending a, the, the, his so-called desk jump uh, a foot high, you know, in a bank. I told you, your name is Jan Kovac. Get your arms and get out of here. So I come out. I said, get your arms. I think they have an armory, you know. So I come out and there is, uh, she says, tell me, where's the armory? He started to laugh. It was very funny. He says, what's so funny? The captain told me I should get my arm and uh, where is the armory? They were laughing even more. 
It says, what's so far? It says, call me or shop you something. It takes you by the, you know, the top of the edge of the mountain. You can see down this small, uh, small road. You put your head the mountain, like in the mountain, you have a ceiling. He says, you go down there and wait a German house. You kill him and take his arm. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I ran the shiva. I never, nobody taught me how to, <laughs> how to disarm a soldier and take his arm, you know, how to kill him. <laughs> it was uh, something, it was... Yeah. And then I heard that I know the story now, but then I met another young man. He was a lieutenant, a little bit more civilized. And I said, I to him. He said, Where do you come from? I saw it, started a conversation. He says, uh, the Captain told me to get the arms. You know? He says, I have an extra machine gun, I'll give it to you. Don't worry. This is the way I got my. <laughs> You're right on the wall. Mm -hmm. You can see the medals. Those, me oh, those are the medals. One oh, of the, the medals is the the silver star, which is. Not this one. Uh, no, no, this uh, is this is the this is a medal which is uh, <laughs> but the silver star. I don't even realize it. Look like a medal. I I'm gonna look again. <laughs> It's a silver star, which is uh, the partisan silver star, which is an international all the Russians, Ukrainian, Czechs, uh, Serbians, they all same, the same, they all had to them. And this was one of the biggest honors to get the silver star. When you travel uh, to any of these countries, do they, uh, like, you know, when they look at your passport, do they have any idea that, you know, what you're all about? Do you get any covered in these countries, like for? Uh, I tell for you something. I was instrumental to the to build the Chavsoy Vestia. Underground. In Pressburg. The Zion was the Nazis exhumed the whole cemetery, and they left a few quorum there, miraculously, twenty one quorum, which is some soifer and around him. Uh, 21, the key to Esh, the key to Ege, Tismanitz, you have, you have, Moshe Mechir, Marami Barbe, you have, you have over there 21, big, 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 big. I'm sorry if it's the younger, youngest cave. Hmm. And they went ahead and uh, with a lot of, a lot of, they, a lot of, a lot of, they spent a lot of money. And they saved those quarters, not to be disturbed, but the entire area where the caver is, they raised the whole area 12 foot higher because it used to be flooding. Uh, so in, uh, so since they raised the surrounding area 12 foot, automatically those quarters were underground. So there was a concrete roof over it, the railroad built a railroad, and the railroad station on top of it. It's what uh, during communists was the same thing. When the communists left, I got here a delegation from uh, one of the grandsons of the Kivesov, son of uh, of Kivesov, simply I'm sorry for Lugano. He sent. Uh, he says we have to do something now with the cave. It's a disgrace. It's on the ground. The railroad is on top of it. It's flooded most of the time, and so on. The only access was through a manhole, manhole, you have to go down, you have to do something. So he says, by me, he says, I'm the president of Pittsburgh Yeshiva, so I, I, I have to do something. So I figure it's a mission impossible, the railroad goes on top of it, the railroad station there. Uh, how could you possibly do anything about that? Anyway, I was invited, I was invited to Czechoslovakia because there was a celebration of the, so, so many years of the, of the liberation, liberation there and so on and they, has, they that's, that's what they gave me, this, uh, uh, this medal here. 
they made it for freeing the country, you know, they want to recognize it and so on. They want to, uh, so I was invited to, so I, was, so I used that occasion, I used over the Hassam Soif. I told them, you call yourself a democratic republic. He says, you're acting like the fascists, and you call yourself a democratic country. I said, you can't have a vote. You're disgracing one of the most important emuners in, 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 Jewish, in Jewish history, which is from so far. And you're doing that. It's a disgrace, you know. But then this must be stopped immediately. And uh, more than the Jewish international community is not going to be silent. I finished uh, I finished talking to so the mayor got up. He says, I appreciate very much bringing this to my attention. He didn't know about it. He didn't realize what we are doing. I went into the UC Media in the City Hall to get this they moved the day road and get this uh, story, get it uh, to give it the, the story to the dignity it deserves. And Lord Hashem, they, they kept the promise. This also proves never give up. Always say, no matter what you're up against, you see? It took me two years till they, they, they finally did everything, but uh, uh, Lord Hashem, they, they managed. Okay, so what are you showing me here? This one okay, here, Mr. Mm -hmm. Silver Star. Mm -hmm. wow. And that was from what you, that Silver Star again was from, from where? Partisans from, from the Partisans. Like like yeah. wow. And who is he running against, Silver? Christine. <laughs>